All right, so it is 1034 for those of us who like to make sure that we honor everyone's time and respect time. If you are just joining us, because I'm still letting people inside of the chat room, if you're just joining us, there is a link in the uh, chat room. If you will go ahead and click on that link and as we are going on with our presentation, if you don't mind, go ahead and clicking on the link and doing the inventory that says your learning styles. It takes about two to three minutes. Don't overthink the questions. It takes about two to three minutes. So welcome to all of you all. I know some of you all are like me, got a little snow outside. Some of you all are just normal day as usual. And thank you for you taking your time to come on in and not see it, find a robbery to stop by and see just a little old me, a little country girl from Fayetteville, North Carolina to tell you about how um, learning styles and what you can do inside of your educational settings to make sure that you are reaching all learning styles. So if you can tell by the background on my uh, screen, hopefully everyone can see it. I am currently uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, went to school at UNCC, got my undergrad in early childhood education and got my master's in uh, elementary education. And I'm also proud to say that I am national board certified. So, and I just renewed for the last time, I am in my 20, eighth year of teaching. So when I finish this year, I'm done. I have 28 ye years behind me, um, nice and solid firm. I have two more years that I'm going to try to stick out so I can say that I uh, left the state of North Carolina with 30 years of teaching experience. And not everybody gets to say that. Um, some people can and some people can't, but not everybody does get to say that. Um, I am a family person. I love my family to death. That's a picture taken uh, before we stopped interacting with COVID. So that is actually the last family picture that my family took. Um, that was New Year's Eve. We decided that we were going to bring New Year's Eve together back at our home church in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Lewis Chapel. So that's taken in the best of view of Lewis Chapel. My younger sister and family, they're still there. My older sister, she's moved on to another church, Mount Calvary, um, but she's still in Fayetteville. And again, I'm in Charlotte. I'm at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a Panthers girl. So um, if you ever see me, I'm a Panthers fan, die hard ever since they came in in 95, 96. One of them, I should know that. I know it's either 95 or 96. And I love, love cold weather. So this type of weather, I'm loving it that we're having right now. The little fellow that you see, um, I just heard him go out to the garage door. That is my last, well, my latest grandbaby. He's not the latest, but he's a baby of the grandbabies. So I do have three grandchildren that I just love to death. I'm Nana. I told them I'm too young and too cute to be called grandma. They had to call me Nana. So we walking down, you know, we holler grandma. Call, call me Nana. Call me Nana. Love chocolate. If you want to bribe me, give me some chocolate. You want to bribe me more? Give me some chocolate that got some good almonds in it or some good pecans in it. Love, love, love that. So for those of you all who um, have paper and pencil with you, the one, if you don't mind, go ahead and copy a little chart like this. Just jot it down because as we're going through, if we were in person, I would give you this handout. But and since we're not in person, I'm going to ask that you just sketch this handout um, and just very simple, put at the top, learning style handout or just learning styles, visual, audio, and kinesthetic. If you just don't mind, take about uh, two minutes to do that so that we can make sure that as you're going through, you find notes. Sometimes people notes are all over the play page. You say, oh, this is visual. Then you got this person, this is visual also. No, um, make sure that you put the notes inside of the right order. Cause it, to me, this is my way of trying to help you to be able to, um, to help organize your thinking as we go along. So if you don't mind, take about one minute to copy that down. And as you are doing that copy, I apologize for my background. They did give us a background that we we're supposed to put up. And of course, me being the overachiever that I am, I tried to log in too early. And by logging in too early, I logged myself out. So I had to go all the way back in and out and come back. And then by the time I got here, people were already in here and I was trying to pull the rest of the stuff up. So I do apologize for the blurred background. I do have the correct one, but I am not the most technology savvy person in the world. So I pray that if I did it, I promise you if I did it, it's gonna cut everything off. So we just gonna go with this blurred background and I'm gonna ask for grace and mercy at the end. 
Miss Sings, what was yes. your last instructions to us? To copy this down. If the I talk Styles handout. Yes, ma'am. If Thank I talk you. too fast, I have oh. no problem with anybody saying you talk too fast. I know I talk too fast. I I, I do that. And part of it sometimes is just nervousness, and part of it is just habit. I, I know I talk fast when I get really nervous. Because I was uh, talking to my sister earlier. She was in one of the other <laughs> sessions. I asked her, I said, um, thank you, uh, Dora. She, uh, she said, um, there are 90 some people. I said, 90 some people. I said, it's cold and snowy. I didn't know 90 some people were coming out. So my sister put some nerves in my stomach. And I shouldn't be nervous because I know what I'm doing. And I know you all want to learn something. And this is what I do. Now, if we have some preachers in the room, I just want you to know, I'm going to call on you if we come to a biblical saying, something biblical. That's not me. Education, I got you all day long, but preach stuff, Bible stuff, I don't want to leave nobody correct that I hadn't studied up on. So I just want you to know that if there are any ministers in the room, thank you, Miss Minnie. I hope you're a uh, minister because I'm going to make sure I'm going to call on you. I'm gonna, not going to give it out any uh, false information. So I'm going to make sure that I direct people to the experts, experts in that area. All right, let's get started. So we're going to look at, can you, hopefully you all can still see my screen. I'm still admitting people. We're going to look at what different learning styles are. Hmm. If you completed your inventory, there are three different things that it should have given you as percentages of what your learning styles are. It could have told you that you are a visual person. It could have told you that you are an auditory person, or it might've told you that you are a tactile person. It's hard virtually to address all three, but there are some ways that we can address all three. By, and I want to, I would say by show of hands, I, I don't want to do hands. Um, I'm sorry, trying to admit somebody. Just call out, if um, just, it doesn't matter. Just call out what your learning style is. It doesn't matter, just call it out. Visual. 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 Mm. Do you, what is the most that you heard? Visual. visual. Mine is, visual and, mine's is a combination of visual and auditory. Very good. Most people are visual. visual. Most people are visual. And guess what? There are a lot of people that are auditory. And for those of you all who are like me, your visual and auditory. I got to see it and I'm hearing it. And as I'm seeing and as I'm hearing, I'm putting right. the picture in my mind as to what yeah. it takes that you're trying to teach me. I love right. my daughters. My I got I have two daughters. I have a, a 24 year old and a 23 year old. And I forgot to tell you about my kids. I'm sorry. I, I, I love my kids. I tell you, I got a 27 year old boy, a 25 man, excuse me, 26 year old man. Those are my adopted boys. I got them jokers when they were 11 and 12 years old. Um, I foster care and they have been the joy of my life. They've given me two beautiful, beautiful granddaughters. And then I have a 26 year old um, daughter who has a 18 month old baby. And then I have a 21 year old um, who is graduating in May. Thank God, that's the last of them. Uh, with, a dual <laughs> major, with a dual major. And I told her, you got a year and you out my pockets. You got a year. But if you're like me, you can, my uh, 21 year old daughter tells me stuff all the time. I'm looking at her, show me. You know, you got to, uh, you telling me this, but you're not showing me. I, I visually got to see or slow down. Like I talk fast, she does too. She get that uh, has that honestly. Um, she knows that she needs to, when it comes down to showing her mom something on the computer, give me some time and grace and work with me because I don't do that very well. Technology is not my thing. Then we have, we had a few people that are kinesthetic. I did hear at least two people. Um, one thing that being virtual has taught, uh, especially working in the school system, you have to now, your listening ears are now very active. And then when they think you don't hear them talking because they got behind that mask, you can hear much sharper because they're um, mm -hmm. you see them talking, but you can hear somebody somebody talking over there. You can, you can see that um, well. So those are our three different learning styles. What does that mean to be a visual learner? Hmm. So if I'm visual, what does that mean? That means you have to, in order for you to retain that information, you have to look at pictures. You have to see graphs. 
go back to your churches. Every time I do this presentation, I make sure I tell them. And if you want to tell them to call me, I ain't got the money. I don't have the money, but just tell them. Color makes a big difference in your presentation. So when they don't want to pick, print things on colored paper, guess what? You, um, you need to make sure that you have things on colored paper because that is, um, that is one of the things um, that people need in order to retain information. Mm -hmm. It's also easy for um, people who are visual to make plans uh, and have outcomes in their mind. I'm one of those people that they think and see the end and then I try to work to get there to the end. It's a good visual uh, people, you have a good sense of direction. That's not me though. I can tell you about an area, but a sense of direction that's to, to take you there. I'm not that person. That part doesn't apply to me. They might apply to some people, but not me. Find a way around maps very easily. That uh, visual people do that. They walk um, out of an elevator and know exactly where they're going. And again, about 75% of people, uh, of visual people, they remember what they read because they actually see it. They actually see it. Um, the presentation, uh, yes, from my understanding, is going to be recorded or is being recorded and it will be available to you afterwards. So for those of you all who want any part of this information because of time constraints, I want to make sure I cover some things to give you time to act actively work. Let's look at auditory. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut out of that. Um, background and diagrams are also important. And then visual people, we're analytic. We like to look at things I'm really like word for word and then put a picture in our mind as to what that word actually says or what is actually being presented inside. Let's look at what auditory people. Auditory people, you, of course you hear and you must hear things for them to have the best chance or for you to have the best chance of learning. So if you give someone a piece of paper, tell them to read it, no, they're probably not going to do it. However, if you give a piece of paper and tell them to read it and they start reading out loud, that means that person is probably auditory and they have to hear it. Even if they're not hearing it from you, if they're reading out loud, it's okay. I, I, one of the things I do is I'm a facilitator. Um, I tell teachers all the time, if children read out loud, don't tell them that they can't read out loud. It's okay for them um, that they don't have to read out loud. I mean, they can read out loud because they're trying to hear, they're reading it and they're trying to hear the information as well. About 30% of children that are um, in school are auditory learners. Um, you, auditory learners helps them um, way a different way to, uh, difficult way to learn new material um, and learning styles. It helps them to modify it. And they also remember about 75% of what they have read. All righty. And then our last learner is a kinesthetic. If we can put kinesthetics in our schools all the time, um, that would be wonderful to help children learn, but a lot of children have to be still and either hear it and focus or see it and focus. But there are some people who actually learn better as a kinesthetic learner. Um, they have the hands-on approach. If you give them the materials, they build it versus reading the directions and having to build, follow the directions step by step. Also, they like to explore. It's okay if you ever see the child inside of the, um, or, or the person inside Okay, um, if, if you ever see the person inside of the uh, uh, student, uh, I'm sorry, playground, if they are just walking off by themselves, just looking down on the ground, they like to explore and that's okay. The person's looking in the window, the person that goes into a room and opens up a cabinet and go into a box, that's that kinesthetic person. They're trying to find something new. Not necessarily being nosy, but always maybe trying to find um, something new. They may find it hard to sit still for long periods of time. So you have to keep that in mind when you're having people that are kinesthetic to be able to sit still. They can't do it. If And it's okay for them to stand up behind a chair. It's okay. And if you think they're fidgeting, ask them what you just said or ask them what, you know, to repeat it back to you with their own words. A lot of people are able to do that if they're a true kinesthetic learner. Um, and then they may um, become distracted 
by their need for an activity. So you may be talking, but they may need to be able to do something. It's okay. I have my little ball, my little ring here for actually medical reasons, but I bought it so you can see, give a kinesthetic person something like this, a ball or a ring that they can squeeze in order for them to help stay engaged inside of the lesson. All right, so what questions so far? I can't see everybody, so you're just gonna have to call out. There's 63 of you, so unmute, um, call out if you want to, if you have a question. None, comments? Good morning. I'm Dale Porter from Center Baptist in Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Um, I do have an educational background, but I noticed that you didn't put music in as a learning style. And my reason for that is I was amazed. Y'all remember Easter and children's speeches and all that. I was in charge of that one year. And one of the mothers came to me and said, my child is having problems in learning this poem, but she remembered that the child, a high school kid, did really well in the choir, the school choir. So she sang her poem and she blew us away because she had a beautiful voice and it was, it was awesome. It was just awesome. That's all I wanted to say. I, I did see that comment. Um, it's, music is technically an interest, it's considered sort of an interest, not necessarily a learning style, it's more of an interest. So if you give me something with science, I'm not going to, you better make sure it's on point and you teaching me well, because I'm not going to remember anything with science. I shouldn't say it, but I will. I have one D on my transcript as an undergrad, and that's in biology at UNCC, and I was not going to take science over again. I am well in math, do well in, in, in literacy, but I just didn't want, I'm not a science person. So the studies that I've done, music is more of a, if you do an inventory of their interest, and then that's where you can go in and put their interest into their learning style and bring those two together. Any other questions or comments before we move on? All right, so feel free to unmute. If you have any type of question or comment, feel free to make sure that you unmute to go, to say if you uh, need to add a comment. All right, so this is a short Hello. video. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Uh -huh. I, was, I was listening at the uh, comment on musical, and I realized that lots of children, of course you said that can be intertwined with learning, but lots of children can remember every word in a song, but when it comes to their learning, they seem like they are apprehend apprehenders about learning. So explain that to me. It goes back to interest. Um, they're interested in the latest phrases, phases that are going on inside of our society today. They want to keep up. So it, it's an interest. Now, if you take a multiplication table and put it in a wrap, I've seen that. I've seen going down the hallway. I saw, I actually jumped in the classroom the other day. Uh, it was a second grade classroom that they were doing the um, exercising to the months of the year, but it was to the beat of, and they told me, I said, who sings this song? And the kids told me, I, and nobody I ever, ever heard of. It wasn't somebody um, that I knew, but they were exercising and doing the months of the year to a popular song. So it all, again, goes back to the interest. You got to know where your audience is. You have to know who they are as far as, because you, know, you may have some, like I said, I'm not a science person. You may have one, another example. I saw a little boy in car ride line the other day. He was um, dissecting a, it was looked to me like a rat, but he said it was a, a cat where he took it apart, it was a movable cat, and he just wanted to know what was making it uh, move on the inside. That's his interest. So that's a conversation that I knew he's struggling in reading. So that might be something that we might be able to tie in with one of his uh, interests that he has, be able to bring in reading passages that deal with scientific ideas to help him hopefully get that reading scores up. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. All right, so very quickly, we're not Can I interject one more thing that I that just really shocked me in that event uh, for Easter for the children at our church? 
I noticed, and I've only been at this church maybe 15 years, but I noticed Easter time when it came for the for the kids to do the speeches, they read it. And that just really just, oh, it irked me because our kids can learn whatever they want to learn. So I implemented, you don't get up there and read your poem. You got to know your poem. But you know, that was not received very well. Sometimes it's about expectations. Um, where your expectation may be for the children to be able to do this. And for whatever reason, your expectation is that everybody doesn't have the same expectation. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody the other day in reference to saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. You can't put your values on people or, or your morals on people. I grew up in, in my house, we didn't have a choice. If you are an elder or if you are someone in a high position or, or a respected position, you better say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, no, sir. You had to say that. Um, but now we can't make children say that because that's enforcing your values on them. And I understand what you're saying because I can see where if you just put a little bit of effort into it besides getting up there standing, kids get more out of it. If you add some music to it, if you add some movement to it, they get a whole lot more out of it. And then you add an audio piece to it because they're listening for, to the rest of the children so they know when it's their turn to uh, finish and uh, to say their part and then know when the end is because they probably, hopefully you have some type of big finale where everybody joins in. So that keeps everybody engaged as well. All right, what other questions do you have? I had just a comment. The music okay. or the raps may be strategies within a style. Mm -hmm. So the music may just be um, a strategy that's helpful for some kids or making a rap out of content material maybe a style, I mean, a strategy within that style. It could, be, it is, it is, it is. It's a strategy, um, like I said, again, it's more of a inventory to, to see, okay, that you can see learning in ways in to do it, right. Yes, ma'am, ways to do it. All right, so I'm gonna go move away from that. And that was called the Prezi for those of y'all who've never seen that when it moves around instead of a PowerPoint. It's, a, it's called a Prezi where it will jump from place to place to place instead of just hitting the button to go to the next screen, hitting the button to go to the next screen, which is a PowerPoint that I'm ready to go into. So what we're going to do is we're ready to dissect a lesson. We're going to look at a lesson and we're going to see if with inside of this lesson, do you see anything that's visual? Do you see auditory? And do you see kinesthetic? And if not, where can we add these pieces in. If you notice, um, I'm not in um, presentation view mode, I'm sorry. If you notice from the slideshow, this is actually a lesson that was taught last Sunday. Uh, my church, we are doing Sunday school virtually. So we actually use this lesson in fourth and fifth grade. So I do work with the fourth and fifth grade team in Sunday school and we are virtual. So this, um, I took some things out just to see if you could see if um, there's something that we need to add in. And then I sort of had some things that we, that I thought about it when I had a chance to go back and re look at the lesson. So hopefully you'll be able to pick up some of those points as well. So on that chart that you have, jot down some things that you saw that were, or see that are visual, that you see that are kinesthetic and that you see that are auditory. Okay, so on your chart, jot those things down. I, again, I can't see you. So um, if you want to make a comment or, or ask a question, go ahead and just put it out there. And if not, I'm gonna revisit the chat room in a minute so that we can answer the questions that are in the chat room. So those of you all who are, have a question there, I do see that. That's there. All right, so we start our morning uh, session out our opening uh, Sunday school lesson out we'll open in prayer we ask for a volunteer and the kids see this bit us uh, so this is not just something that we do the kids actually see this as we're going along with it we go over the class rules you know our class norms and you can read them there one of the things that we are very stickler for is um, making sure that the students are staying engaged and the way we do that is we ask them to turn on their camera. And I know a lot of y'all don't have y'all cameras turned on. And somebody in the group already told me, I'm just getting, and I, I do know that. And, and it's my sister, and I'm gonna just say it, it's my sister, so y'all pray for her. Um, 
she um, is just getting over COVID and she said, I'm on this camera, I'm, I'm on this call, but I'm not turning my camera on. So um, just know, don't ask us to turn our camera on. So you can thank Ms. Smart for that, but she's here, she's better. And, um, and I'm grateful <laughs> for that. So for those of y'all who don't have your camera on because you're here for uh, illness reasons and, or, and you just still wanna be a part of it, bless you, we're praying for you. And those of y'all who just didn't wanna turn your camera on, I understand that too, because that's me some days, but I have to turn mine on in my meetings. So that's one of the ways to make sure that the kids stay engaged. And then we also ask them about the chat box. And we luckily, um, we have four teachers online as we do it. So we ask, have a good um, obedience with that for them not to, in, to in, use the chat box. So, yes, ma'am. Could you give us an example of um, abusing the chat box? So we had one little girl who um, decided that she wanted to put in the chat box um, it's a nice day today. Now we're teaching. It's a nice day today. Nobody asks about the day. This is how we open it up. We open up with a prayer and then we have this emoji face and we ask them the questions of uh, who's in the room, identify yourself, you know, and share an emoji as to how you feel. And then Reverend Chad is our youth minister. So we ask them to go back. None of that has to do with a nice day today. Then she puts, nobody responded. Does anybody hear me talking? Then she puts it in again. Oh, I guess I'm out here by myself. That's abusing the chat box. So somebody pulled her into the, a side breakout room. An adult pulled into a side breakout room and had a nice little conversation with her. She came back and she was fine. You know, and then we've also, not our group, but we've also um, had children that may have put some inappropriate things in there. And you just have to make sure that you have people on this can monitor the chat box as well. Thank you. Uh huh. So one of the things, we send a letter out to our parents and students. We actually send it to the parents and we send it to the students as well if they have an email address to make sure that they are prepared for the lesson. Because if you are that auditory person, sometimes you might need to hear it more than once. So it gives you a chance to prepare. If you're that kinesthetic person and you're like, oh my gosh, let me see if I can, as we're doing this, let me see what movements I can do to go with certain words. But we do have a child that likes to move. And one of the things we taught them if, um, if when they need to fill the move, if they hear certain words. So our um, faith word, this uh, unit is the word journey. So when they see the word journey or hear the word journey, they move their hand uh, up, but they, they heard it. We know that they're not asking a question, that that's just their faith word, uh, way of just being able to move as we go. We in our group are studying the books of the Bible. So before the children leave, it is their mission, it is our mission that they know the books of the Bible, but not only know the books of the Bible, not how many they are, if they're in the Old Testament or the New Testament, what makes them uh, fit inside the Old Testament? And are they in that book of laws? What makes them fit inside of the New Testament? Are they in that book of letters? Hmm, where do they, where do those things fit? inside of the Bible, not just, and they have this sheet because we have a folder for them that they can print it off. So they have a sheet that they can do it, look at it. Then we do what's called a Bible trivia. So this is one way we've done Jeopardy where we have the kids stand up and we have, they have a um, pretend bell and we're watching the screen and say, boom, that they act like they are hitting the bell. Um, we've done Wheel of Fortune where they spin the wheel. So I'm gonna go to this and spin the wheel and see what happens. So if I spin the wheel, and I just changed the question. So I didn't make a copy of it. So I didn't mess up. And it's just going to ask us 2 Corinthians, where is it in the Bible? Or I may say, where um, section does 2 Corinthians fall in the Bible? Or I may say, what book is in front of 2 Corinthians? What is book is behind 2 Corinthians? So you can actually do it that way. And the kids, they pretend that they're spinning the wheel to help get them engaged in that part. We do our memory verse. Um, we have the children make up a uh, mind. Um, one of our, we had a uh, child that is um, parents are uh, mute. They don't, they hear, but they don't speak for whatever reason. Um, so that child knows sign language. So we actually have the children to do sign language with the memory verse, which has actually helped because we do have a sign language class or uh, ministry at our church. And we invite some of the people that come in for, um, to, to come into our Sunday school lesson and teach us our memory verse for the unit using um, sign language. That helps a lot with the kinesthetic uh, person. Then we go into preparing for um, our story. We give them this picture. 
Ask them, what do they know about Jesus? We know that everyone has a schema about Jesus in the temple, or they should. And if they don't, they don't. It's fine. And it, as adults, some adults may not have the schema of what about or who is Jesus or um, why is he in the temple? Some of us don't. Then we ask them, what do they notice and what do they wonder about the picture? Somebody unmute and tell me something that they notice or wonder. I noticed that the uh, characters look more Caucasian than uh, <laughs> Middle Eastern. What else do you notice or wonder? This is Belvia Williams from First Baptist in Fayetteville. I noticed that they made the character of Jesus a young fellow, like he was actually 12 years old, and the students could relate to that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else notice or wonder anything? This is Merle Wilmore from uh, Springfield Baptist Church in Raleigh. I noticed a woman in the temple. Ah, that was my wonder too. I was like, who is she and why is she there? Anybody know? Is this his mother <laughs> looking for him? Anybody else? Yes, it was the mother looking for him. Yeah, that was one of the questions that came up as a wonder, because I, I started um, looking at the picture before we taught the lesson, and I called one of my colleagues. I said, there's a lady in here. Why is she in here? And we had to go back and do our research to say, oh, that's his mom. She actually is in there looking. Looking for him. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And also kind of the hand to her mouth is like, is that my child doing yes. this with all those elders around listening yes. to him? Yes. And then when, you know, and I love his response. Like, you should have known where I was at. You should have known yeah. what I was doing. You know, look, why are you sitting there looking all uh, bewildered? I'm here. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, right. and we, have, we had to break down <laughs> at the fact that how can you leave your child and your only child? And right. back in those days, they car they traveled in caravans. So they thought he was with the children. He was right. The and then they got to point where rest and they realized <laughs> that um, he wasn't there. Did I do all right preachers? If I did, just say yes. Somebody tell me yes. Because that's what I taught kids anyway. So I hope I did all right. <laughs> yes. I thank you so much. All right. So another thing that we do is we have our students that we have them to keep a journal where they can go back and reflect. Notice that um, I said a journal that's just for Sunday school where we have them to, they can either print this out for those who can't do the lines or just need the digital spacing that is equal because uh, equal, some children have to have that spacing just right but we will print that out and uh, have it in our resource folder and they can print it out or they can just copy it from the screen if they choose to where um they can give the definition of the their definition not this is before we start anything this is their book their child definition characteristics of what they think the word journey looks like examples of the word journey and then non-examples of the word journey and that helps out with antonyms, synonyms, what do you think it looks like? And then actually um, one of the discussions that we had is journey. So you gotta make sure you do your homework it can be a noun or a verb. So you gotta know how it's being used inside of the content. Have them put that away. And then we actually give them what the definition of journey is. And then we go back and we define, uh, refine what their thinking was as to how we're going to use it. Not saying that what you did is wrong because journey, we didn't tell you if it was a noun or a verb or how it was used. Uh, we just said for our purposes, it's used to follow where God leads you. Also writing, one more thing that we do, we have to have them to answer one question. One question, one, it helps to get them to think about what they're doing and what they're getting ready to hear. And then two, it also helps them to be able to relate to it. Say, oh yeah, I thought this, but now I'm thinking that. So we ha have them to do what's called a quick write. We'll have them to answer, take about, um, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's three minutes, but we like to have our students to do a quick write on what it is that and how it relates mm -hmm. to today as to how um, the lesson is going to go. Bible, uh, our Bible story. Hmm. So this is what a normal, typical Bible story would look like, how we would put it there, okay? This is how our Bible story looks like. Anybody have an idea as to why we move from here to here? Visual learners need color. 
Yes, ma'am. What about audio learners? Read it out loud. Go ahead. Read it out loud. Okay. Yes, they're they're going to hear it. What about kinesthetic? Hands on. They don't touch it. Your they hands on. It. Hands on material. That, exactly. Because they can, all of this, they can print out. But also, I have to be able to, even with my eyes, I move my eyes, I got to be able to see, okay, if I'm the student that's reading the red, red words, I got to go here, then I got to turn around and I got to go there. So they're actually, some are moving their hands, some are just moving their eyes, but they're hopefully moving something in other words. But we have a student who identified who's going to read black. And it depends on how many students we have in the room. Somebody may read both black. Somebody may read the first one. Somebody may read the second one. It just depends. And we uh, make sure that mm -hmm. we try to gauge this slide as the number of students that are normally come. Um, we usually average around 12 to 13 students. That's our normal average yeah. that we have. Then we have what's called the Bible story. Oh, you so, tell her that? Uh, they don't have your number. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, somebody's telling somebody else something. If you don't mind muting until um, you want to um, speak to the group. So then we have a Bible story for our viewers. We're just going to listen to a first uh, or a video. What time is it? It's 11 so we So they'll listen to the video as to what the story is going to be about. And it's about Jesus in the temple. Then it's going to relate to their life um, as a young person. So because of the time, we're not going to view the video and that's another thing know what when it's time to say it's okay that you can't do everything inside of your lesson know when it's time remember those uh kinesthetic persons they got to be able to move then we do another quick write um after they've listened to the video where do they think jesus is on the journey and how do you think teachers at the temple felt when they listened to jesus so they have a question that they can choose from to see that they understood it and then they well they take one thing that they've learned and then we'll have them just to put it on what's called our jam board. And I took some of them down so, so it won't be so overwhelming. And they can just write down what they've learned, one thing that they've learned. What you looking for? All right. Mm -hmm. So can someone tell me at least one thing that was visual that you got from the lesson? And I know it was fast. I know it was just an overview. But the one thing that you got that was visual. The coloration and the wording of right. activities, or what else? I would Using say PowerPoint slides. Okay. What else? And the, and the presentation. Okay. Anything else visual that you see? The picture of Jesus in the temple. Mm -hmm. Anything that you see that probably can be added visually to help a visual student. Um, I thought the trivia was visual. It, it, it is. It, and by them pretending, that's also well, kinesthetic as well. But what anything that you see that can be added? Well, maybe a demonstration of the word journey itself, since journey seems to suggest that there is a process of getting to your destination which is exactly what we do in our growth on a daily basis in the word. Very good, good. Anybody else, any more comments? All right, so auditory, what did you see that was auditory that you think or saw inside of the lesson? For them to share one thing that they learned. Okay. Your the video. videos, right? Your videos that you had embedded in there. Yes. Anything else? Well, just the image of Jesus teaching uh, itself means that the spoken kind of suggests that your spoken disposition is also an important way of sharing and growing. Okay. 
anything that you see that we could have added for audio? For your color text, uh, probably you do this, but have the student to actually stand or do some type of motion when it's their turn to read their colored sentence. Okay. Anybody else? Kinesthetic. Having the students to write it out. Mm -hmm. What else would you see with kinesthetic? To repeat. Yes, because actually inside of the video, which um, um, because of time we didn't get to do, uh, they actually tell them to stop and repeat that their voice is important um, because yes. they're seeing Jesus and his voice was important in the temple. So they're actually telling the students to stop and actually say their voice is important. Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. other kinesthetics that we could add? Well, you I could guess add the idea of a tempo associated with the color red versus the color green versus yellow, that kind of thing. Okay. And also, hands-on. Yes, ma'am. What, what, what hands-on do you think we could add? As a kinesthetic, I was say explore. I'm sorry, one person said again? I explore, and most of kinesthetic students like to explore things, yes. and sometimes mm -hmm. you can have demonstration in order for them to, uh, for their mind to re re reflect and then they can be able to uh, feel comfortable and when they're exploring. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I was also gonna say they could use their hands to follow. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, your brain, the you do realize that your brain is a muscle because if you don't use it, it gets a little flabby. So right. it, 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 uh, so your brain is a muscle. Remember when you were having that picture? So you, you really killed two birds at one stone. When I had that picture, you had to look and study that picture. You're using your brain. That's a muscle that also can fit under the kinesthetic as well. Mm -hmm. also you also fit. said uh, they could also use their hands. Uh, they could raise their hands mm -hmm. um, yes. for different things. Yes. Or clap. If uh -huh. they felt that they enjoyed something, use exactly. different reflections. Exactly, exactly. So one of the things that I saw in the chat that someone actually um, said, they want, they're saying that it revolves, my examples revolved around children. Yeah, that's what I teach, I teach mostly children. This works on adults too. This works on adults. How many times do you see adults get up and walk out of a, of, of a some type of class? They, they do. Because if it's a sit and get, as we like to say and like to do, because it's a lecture on time, they walk away. Robert Scott, um, Deacon Robert Scott at my church, he's very good about putting you in groups, putting you actually to um, be able to get up and present inside of your groups. You have to show something um, that you've talked about inside of your group. So do these um, activities, make sure you do if you're not talking to us, please. These activities also help you to um, work well with adults. Adults don't like to probably physically get up and they don't really like to talk about um, talk to people they really don't know or they don't even want people to know that they don't know. Same thing with kids. They don't want to get up and go around with people they don't know or, or they want to be around their friends. The same thing happens. I'm an adult. I'm in my 50s. I'm a big kid. I'm nothing but a big old kid. You get me to, in a group that I really don't know people, I'm going to be the one that's probably not going to say too much, but you get me in a small group that engages me and gives me activities and I have to be able to um, talk and present and carry my load. Um, then I'm going to step up and do what I'm supposed to do. So this also works well um, with children, I mean, adults and children mm -hmm. as well. Um, someone also said it is important to um, actually know your audience. It is very, very important to make sure that you know your audience as well. All righty. So back up out of here and go here. I'm sorry, I'm going back to me. So any questions that you may have? Questions, will, comments? Will you forward this presentation to Dr. Barr? Hey. Um, 
I can, but I, I'm quite be quite transparent. I don't know who okay, Dr. Martin I'm, is. I'm, uh, in class, really. Can someone please mute that's on the phone? Okay, bye -bye. Listen, what did you want? Doc. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is. I I'll call you to myself. Um, okay. All right, dear. Okay. For those of y'all who are um, unmuted, uh, who are unmuted, please make sure when you're speaking to someone in your area, please make sure you're mute. Um, but if somebody will put in the chat who Dr. Barr is, um, I went through Jennifer Campbell to be able to do this presentation with you. So I know who Ms. Campbell is, but I, I'm not okay. sure who Dr. Okay. Barr is. Um, um, Lynn, okay. I if you just email it to Any me. Any other I'll questions? It, I'll, I'll get it to the right person. Email it to me. This is Sister Campbell. Email it to me and I'll get it to the right person. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Okay. I didn't know you were on. I didn't even go look at the audience. Yes, Ms. Yes, go ahead. Now, do you prepare all the slides for your Sunday school class or do you, the four teachers, take turns in preparing the slides and the information? It depends on whose turn it is to teach. So we do take turns. However, so next fourth Sunday is my turn to teach. So I'll be doing the slides for the next fourth Sunday. The second Sunday is uh, Ms. Clay's turn. So Ms. Clay will be doing it. So we do rotate um, and it works out. We only have Sunday school once um, every second and fourth Sunday. We don't have it every Sunday. So it works okay. out and it doesn't put a lot of stress on teachers, um, volunteers, so okay. that we can still make sure that we um, do a, a decent lesson. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. What other questions or concerns do you have? Comments? Uh, Ms. Sings, this is Deborah Harvey. I'm from Sandy Run Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh -huh. you, as I was entering the room, you mentioned a link to a survey to determine the learning styles. Could you put that back in the chat? It wasn't in the chat box when I came in. Okay. Miss Smart, I know you're in here somewhere. Um, will you put that back in there for me? Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. And that no matter, uh, even if it's um, young or old, no matter how old they are, you can use that link, especially doing virtual. If you are using it as a, um, with younger children, you might want to change some of the wording, but because this is a, um, and like know your audience, this is an older crowd or mature crowd that I'm working with, I needed to make sure that it was ideas that could help relate to um, you and to help you engage in your learning. Right. I have other one questions? other question. One yes, other question. Um, mm -hmm. How um, how difficult is it to try to incorporate the at least the four uh, learning styles that you have mentioned into each lesson? It's not hard the, at all. If you look okay. at that chart that we talked about at the beginning, I'm not sure if you were here on the beginning. Um, I was not. I was having difficulty getting in. That's okay. <laughs> Let me go back to it. This chart right here, okay. this is actually a cheat sheet for you. Okay. So if you present your lesson or get ready to do your lesson, then mm -hmm. um, you can review it. And just like I said for you all to actually write down mm -hmm. as we're talking about the different learning styles inside of that category. And then when we presented the lesson, how you could identify and put in that category, just Analyze yourself, being a, a, a good presenter, being a good teacher is being a reflective learner. See, okay, if, if I do this, I need to make sure I have marked off this. This is where people are auditory. These are where people are um, visual. Right. These are where people are kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. So you're planning your lesson with this in mind? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. Always. And, and, and that helps you to be able to make sure you're engaging others. Sometimes, and, and, and it's just honesty. Sometimes some lessons are stronger in right. visuals and less that's in kinesthetic. Exactly. And yes. you know, so that's why you need to make sure. Our rule that we try to do is we try to make sure we have at least two of each. Okay. okay. That's what I guess I had in my head. Some, some things are very uh, amenable to a visual person or a kinesthetic person, but can't figure out how to do the auditory piece or what would be a good way to infuse that style in the lesson. But exactly. I guess you just make an attempt to exactly. include at least two kind of stimulus that would have appealed to either. 
Yes, ma'am. Is that's, that what you're saying? Yes, okay. ma'am. At least two. And it may not come off because for me, I'm a visual person. I, I'll be the one to put pictures with everything if I could. And I had to <laughs> stop because I'm like, everybody wants to see all your pictures you put in that uh, right. stuff. Like, nobody wants to see all that stuff. Uh, but you have to make sure that you do a conscious effort as to um, put it in. And then when right. you get to that part, make sure, especially if it's challenging to you, then right. that you, like kinesthetic is not something that I really probably want to do on a, on a daily basis, but I have to make sure I put it in uh, lessons as well. So just make sure that you do it and do it to the best of your ability. Another thing that I would um, highly recommend, feedback is golden, good or bad, feedback is golden, where you listen to what your peers are saying to you, you listen to what your scholars are saying to you and actually ask them what went well in a lesson because we what didn't go well, How what would you like to see? And actually try it. Even if it's something, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. No, they do, because they actually said it. They took the time to voice it and say it. You might want to um, listen and at least try it. At least try it. Okay. Thank oh, you. You're so welcome. All right. So it is 1125. And Miss Dora, are you still here? Miss Dora? Ms. Smart, is Ms. Dora still here? I don't think so. Okay. If I can have someone to volunteer to do a closing prayer for us, please. I will. Okay, thank you. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of your son, Jesus. And we thank you, God, for allowing us to be able to learn more about you in this pandemic season. Thank you, God, for the leaders. Thank you for the teachers. And God, continue to help us to do better and to do our work that is that you have sent us to do. And God, we continue to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so, so much. I so appreciate that um, so much. So for those of you all who are um, hopefully going on to the next session, please enjoy the rest of your um session or your last session that you have those of you all who are uh, just want to sit back and relax and taking some of the things that you've learned hopefully you go to the next session though that's what you're supposed to do um go ahead and do that and just enjoy your day and enjoy the weather and enjoy life enjoy life i put my contact information back up on the screen if anybody wants to contact me you're more than welcome have a wonderful <laughs> one leave it there for a while so we can write it yeah yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am Wonderful session, yeah. though. Oh, thank you. They may cut me off, so I, I'll leave it there till um, at least eleven thirty-two. Okay, they may okay, cut me off. Okay, that'll be so great. Right. Can you send any of your information to individuals if we email you? Yes, ma'am. If you email okay. me, I will. Okay, I'm gonna try to, try to put it in there quickly because okay. I want to get in touch with you. Okay, okay. thank you. So your email no is mail.com and not gmail.com. Yeah, yes, that is correct. It is not Gmail, it's mail.com. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you said that because I was already thinking she forgot her G. <laughs> so you and the funny she part did. about it is uh, I, people think that all the time they're like, you don't know. Yeah, I know it's mail.com. It's not gmail, it's mail.com. Thank you. That way you intentionally have to mail it to me. You can't just say Gmail because most people um, have Gmail accounts. No, you intentionally have to leave that G off in order for me to get mail. So I don't get a lot of spam mail. Okay. So that is, your email address is correct. Is that? Yes, right? ma'am. It is mail.com, not gmail.com. Okay. Okay. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I couldn't get my background together but i tried to log in and then when i have to i, I can't rush i don't like to rush <laughs> well you did a wonderful job the background is fine and the presentation was excellent Thank i'm belvia williams from first baptist in fayetteville so we're gonna have to get together and collaborate oh so, so i'm a fayetteville girl <laughs> me too yes i'm I'm Sigrid Davenport uh, from Mount Gilead in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, I'm gonna get with you because maybe you can do a presentation. Um, okay, no problem. Y'all, 
for those of you all who are still here, I have been blessed. I um, have cheated death twice within the last two years. And mm. anything the Lord gives me and allows me to do, I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to get out and do whatever he has. I don't have a problem. I went to the hospital, went to the doctor, saw the doctor one time for 15 minutes, got home, and he called me and told me to get to the emergency room. That was July 7th of last year. They told me I was in kidney failure. Oh, wasn't, wow. in, wasn't in kidney failure. I, I was, but I wasn't. It was my liver. My liver had stopped giving blood to my kidney. And oh. all that. So January, July 7th, I go into the emergency room. July 15th, I get a new liver. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. You got a testimony. Yes, ma'am. I got a testimony. Yeah. testimony. Yeah. I, you, you don't hurt. I didn't sit up. I got placed on the wait list July 12th, July 15th at 2 o'clock. I'm in the operating room. Bless your heart. So that's why I say if I can do anything for anybody and if I can help whatever, because if this reaches some help somebody to be able to reach one person. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. And I'm Kathy Harley from Fayetteville, North Carolina, Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Miss Harley, you know I know who you are. Oh, you do? You Adrian's mama, you Miss Harley, y'all Miss Harley used to give me money when I would come home from college. She put five dollars on my hand. I'd never get Miss Harley. Thank you, Miss Harley. <laughs> oh, bless you. You never know, do you? You don't. No, I won't no, because Miss Harley, because of what you did, uh, and I don't say this to brag about uh, what I did. Uh, yesterday, a little girl that's doing her uh, student teaching, she needed to download the app. The app was five ninety nine. I said, here, baby, just download the app. Don't worry about the money. Bless you. Download you. The yeah. app. But because yeah. you, you and put in me to give. I mean, that was, That's you right. didn't have to do that for me. You didn't have Hello. to do that. Well, you know, I just thank God and I just continue to do what you need to do because God is love and that's, and you don't never know who you are touching. Yes, ma'am, you Absolutely. don't. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, love you, Miss Harley. Love you too, honey. Hmm. All right. Anything else? Because it's because they will. I tried to log in early and they kicked me out. So I don't want us to get kicked out. I want us to end on a good note. So anybody else needs to screen up before we leave out? Did you find out who Dr. Barr was? Did someone send you the information? No, Miss Campbell is actually going to. Um, I'm going to send it to Miss Campbell and Miss Campbell will get the information sent to Dr. Barr. Okay, he is the executive secretary treasurer for the General Baptist. Okay, but she'll you. probably send it to you. Yeah. Well, actually, okay. the, the person that handles that is Dr. Lakia uh, Cooper. He, she's the person that will handle that too. So that's who I'm going to send it to. That's who set all this up with Dr. Barr. And she's new. Um, yeah. Admissions. Right. Well, thank you, uh, Sister Lane. You did an excellent job. I, I jotted down a few notes. As now I am working with the children's ministry, <laughs> creative ideas. So I got a few notes from your presentation. So, well, thank, and th you. thank you. And the one thing I didn't get to that I wanted to, but I, that would have taken another 10 minutes, uh, is actually mm -hmm. how to engage them electronically. So that's where they are. There, a lot of them are electronic. So if you all want some information about um, some electronic ideas, uh, Jamboard was one, Spinning the Wheel was one. Um, there's a whole bunch of other different things that the Jeopardy idea was one. We have a, um, oh God, I can't think of um, Cahoots. That's another way that we engage children. So there are so many different ways to engage children and even adults. Adults, I was in a Bible study class one day and then adults were playing Cahoots on their telephone. It was so funny because they thought that you would have thought that they were outside seeing snow for the first time. They hadn't played a game on their computer where they're competing against each other and somebody that they know. Um, so they thought that that, that was wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna have to uh, end the session because people are coming in and I don't want them to think that this is for the next session because I know we do share this link. So if you have any other questions, please feel or comments. Please, I take comments too. You want to tell me, girl, you talk too fast? I know I do, I know I do. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Um, please feel free to text me um, or my cell phone or email me either way. So you all have a blessed day and y'all take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.